Hello everyone. Today I would like to introduce with my brother to you my Datsun C110 Ken Mary Coupe that we picked up a few months ago and I've just started now to modify and clean up as well. If you'd like to follow along with the build of this car, we'd love to, for you to like and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with all the things that we're going to do to the car. In this video, we're going to be going around the car and having a look at its condition and some interesting parts of the car. But before we do that, we actually got a really interesting package today, which was some wheels that we bought a couple of weeks ago for the car. So these wheels are Weds Racing 14 by sevens, and I think they look really awesome with the car. They're period correct, so maybe a little bit newer than the car, but they look really good and they fit really well as well. They're 14 by sevens, and we were a little bit worried because of the width of them, of the standard wheels are, I think, 14 by four and a half, that they wouldn't fit, particularly because they have a zero offset, which means they have quite a bit of dish on the wheel. So the first thing we need to do now that we have these wheels is go to the tire shop and get some tires for them. We decided to go with a 195 60 14, and that's basically because we didn't want to have too much stretch on them. We wanted the tires to perform really nicely. And also this is quite a common tire size. So it was nice to get um, a decent quality tire for a reasonable price. And luckily enough, we have a tire shop just around the corner from us. So it was only a two minute drive down to the tire shop to get some new tires fitted. The tires we ended up getting aren't particularly sticky and they're not particularly race oriented or anything like that. But because um, this is just really gonna be a cruising car and a car that we drive to the shops and that kind of thing, we wanted something that was gonna last a long time. And because we're now running a seven inch wheel instead of a four and a half inch wheel, we think that um, even a lower quality tire such as this is still gonna be perfect for our needs and something that's gonna last a really long time too. If we decide to take this thing to the track or do any racing with the car, I think we'll get another set of tires, another set of wheels as well, maybe with something like a semi-slick on there, something that's just for going onto the track. But for now, I think these wheels just for cruising around are gonna be perfect and gonna really make a big difference to the handling of the car. We got so excited that we had these new wheels that we decided to put them on straight away. And we found a couple of oil leaks underneath the car. There was one at the sump gasket. So there's a couple of things that we need to do to tidy this car up, but overall it's in pretty good condition. And when I go around the car in a few minutes, um, I'll show you exactly what we've done so far and what we plan to do in the future as well. As you can see on this front fender, it does have a little bit of damage to the uh, front right fender and that can probably be pulled out and then bogged over, but we're gonna see if we can find a replacement fender for this um, fender, just because we'd like the car to be as bog free as possible. And I mean, it's quite an extensive dent. Um, the next thing we're gonna be working on uh, once we've tidied up all the parts of the car mechanically is we want to do a respray on the car. We want to keep it the original color, which is the um, blue that you see here. I'm not actually sure what the color code is. If you know what it is, let, let me know in the comments so that um, everyone can know the paint color and then That'll be easier for me as well, so thank you if you do that. Uh, we're gonna keep it the same color because it's a really original car, and it would be a shame, we think, uh, to change the color of the car. We like the color anyway, so it'd be nice to keep it this blue color. The car does have a few rust spots here and there, and you'll see that at the end of the video when we do a walk around and I talk about all the little bits of the car that we'd like to fix. So there will be a little bit of welding to do, some body work. Um, there are quite a few holes uh, just on the underside of the right-hand side of the car, as you'll see a bit later on. But overall, this car is very rust-free, and we're very happy just how rust-free it is because this car was left in a barn for 10 or 15 years in a really dry area of Australia. So we're really lucky, actually, how rust-free this car is. The car actually has um, the original hubcaps that came with the car from the dealership as well as the original radio as well, which actually still works too. So really, really complete car. Everything that is in there was there from the factory. Nothing has been replaced apart from one piece of fabric that goes over the dashboard, which has been replaced since it was made. When we were fitting these wheels, we were pretty confident that they were gonna fit because we've been on all the relevant forums and asked, what is the biggest size that you can get on a Datsun 240K C110 with the rear guards that have not been converted to a GTR replica? And everyone said 14 by seven plus four is about as far as you can go before things start getting dangerous and the guards start rubbing and all of that kind of thing. So we thought, well, 14 by seven zero, that's only four millimeters difference. So we're pretty confident that these will fit under the guards. But once we actually put the rear wheels onto the rear of the car, while it was jacked up, it really looked like it was not gonna fit. And we started getting really worried that these wheels weren't going to fit under the guards. It also looked the same on the front. It looked like there was about half a mil to a centimeter of oversize on the wheels over the fender. But what we did is we decided to jack the car down really, really low, really, really slowly 
uh, just to see if we could get away with it. And it turned out that we could just about get away with it on the front and on the rear, particularly because uh, we were still running stock suspension and the car was still really, really high up. So we are going to have to do a little bit of work with these fenders just to widen them out, give them a bit of a rolling treatment, just so those wheels really tuck under nicely because we would like to add some king springs and some lowered harder shocks as well to this car to maybe lower it about four centimeters or somewhere around there just so the wheels are sitting nicely inside the guards without too much of a gap. So here is the car. This is a 1972 Datsun C110, which was called a 240K in Australia, but was known as the Skyline in the in Japan. And this is a 1972 version, so it's one of the earliest ones actually ever to be made in Australia. I'm not sure if it was made in Australia, but it was um, either made or, de or delivered. It was one of the first ones. And this was originally actually a 240K GT, but then the GT badges were removed from the Datsun uh, 240Ks in 1972. I'm not really sure why. Um, I think they got told by the manufacturers in Japan to remove the GT badge and then add the GL. So this is now a GL 1972 Datsun 240K. Everything on this car is original, give or take. Um, it has, um, it's really nice. It has um, very low rust. Uh, the paint is absolutely awful, as you can imagine from a really old car. Some parts of the paint have actually been touched up and then faded again. So it's definitely going to need an entire respray over the entire car. But overall, the panels are all looking in reasonably good condition. We do have the problem of the fender on the, uh, the front right fender has a big dent in it. But apart from that, everything is looking really nice and clean. One of the ways that you can distinguish a Australian delivered 240K from a Japanese one is it will say Datsun on the back instead of Nissan. And it will say 240K as well, because these were badged as a Datsun 240K instead of as a Nissan Skyline. It has the original exhaust, as you can see here. And I really like the Bosozoku style thin and long a resonator that these things have. It needs to be retouched on the back as well. You can see that all the Datsun and 240K badging all needs to be redone. Uh, but the lights, the rear lights are looking pretty nice. And a lot of people actually change these Datsun rears to the Skyline rears. So the Datsun ones are actually quite rare. Um, I think we'll keep that because I think um, it would be a shame to turn this into a GTR replica because you can see the rear guards are untouched and it's quite rare to see these cars with untouched rear guards. So I think it would be um, nice to keep it original in that way. It has the Australian delivered front as well, and you can see it says 240K GL on the front. And uh, they would say something different uh, depending on the model of the car, whether it was a 240K or if it was a Skyline in Japan, it might say something like GTX, uh, GT, a few other different ones, or GTR as well. There's a super rare version of this car, which is the GTR, which they only made 148 of, um, and that has um, a different engine and different suspension parts and different rear guards and that kind of thing. Uh, but this car, has the L24 engine, and hence why it's called a 240K. So you can see here that the dent in the front rear, in the, in the front quarter panel on the right, um, is quite bad. And I think it would be better probably just to replace this quarter panel altogether. Um, this car did often come in blue. So if we were not going to respray it, it would probably be quite easy to match the paint, but we're not going to bother with that. You can see here that the dish looks really good, but the wheels are looking a little bit like they're sticking out. Um, and we also have a broken window here, broken mirror, I should say, um, because when we got this car delivered, uh, the transport company unfortunately smashed the mirror, uh, which is a real shame. But um, I think we'll probably end up getting Japanese fender mirrors on them, on the car instead. So you can see that the interior is in reasonably good condition. We're just missing the shroud uh, for the steering column. And then we have also some carpet to replace as well. And there's a couple of little rips in the seat, but overall it's in not bad condition. I think what we'll end up doing is either getting a um, Datsun old school period specific racing bucket seat for the driving seat, or we might potentially reupholster both of the seats just so they match. Not really sure yet. Here you can see a couple of the pieces of the uh, the steering column that we got with the car, but they're broken. Um, so we might have to do something like 3D print a new set, or I'm not really sure what we're going to do there because it's probably quite difficult to find these um, you know, on Yahoo auctions or whatever it might be. And I don't think they're the same as any other Datsun, but if you know where we might be able to find one of these or if they're the same with any other car, uh, please do let me know. The rear seats are in excellent condition, they're perfect. But again, the carpet is a little bit worn out and it's just gonna be nice to get another carpet. It's not gonna be too expensive and it'll make a massive difference to the car. So yeah, overall the interior is looking really nice and also the headliner is looking really good as well. So that's everything for the interior. Overall, we're really happy with how it looks and just a few things that we need to fix. 
Now going back to the outside of the gut of the bodywork, you can see when we get really close to the paint, um, there's a lot of imperfections and a lot of um, dirt in the paint and that kind of thing, because this car was stored for about 15 years in a shed. So we're definitely gonna have to do an entire respray over the car. And you can see here where the rust is. We've got a couple of quite nicely sized rust holes in the underside of the car and also in the doors as well. So that's gonna be a little bit of work um, cutting all of that out and welding in new pieces of metal. That's going to be uh, probably the hardest part of the build, I think, because um, I think bodywork is quite difficult, especially to get right. So that is going to be a big challenge for this car. So now finally, let's have a look at the engine. And I'm not going to turn the engine on yet because there's still a bit of work we need to do to get it running perfectly. The spark plugs we're using are not the right spark plugs for the engine. So it's running a little bit rough at the moment, but we've done quite a lot of work uh, and that's the final thing we need to do to the car just to get it running perfectly. It did have the correct spark plugs in it previously, um, but they were looking very tired and old. So we've just replaced them um, with nice clean ones for now, just so we can move the car around. But we've uh, replaced the coil pack because the coil pack wasn't working. To, um, so now we have a nice shiny one. We also replaced the distributor, the leads and the rotor cap as well. We've got a new thermostat in there as well. We do need a new radiator because it is running a little bit hot when we drive it. We also have a new radiator cap on there as well. The radiator is going to be one of the final touches we need as well. We've got a new uh, fuel filter in there and a new fuel filter here as well. And we've just uh, topped up all the fluids as well in the car and replaced the battery. We've also done a carby tune on the car, just a rough tune to get it uh, running nice and smoothly. And it's running pretty well, um, but we really do need to wait until uh, we have the right spark plugs in there. This is a line that um, shoots down um, the fluid if the car is overheating and the pressure inside the radiator gets too great. Normally you shouldn't see any fluid coming out of that, but if the car is overheating, um, that does happen. And we are seeing a bit of fluid come out of there when we drive the car for a while. And the lights are all working really nicely. Um, everything is looking really good in there. Just need to do the spark plugs. And then in the next video, we'll fire the car up and we'll see it uh, running and we'll see how it sounds as well. So that is everything for this video. I really hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think of the car, what you would like to see us do to the car. If you have any suggestions for anything we need to look at or need to do, we'd love to hear your suggestions. And uh, let me know what you think of the wheels and of the car as well. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video when we look at uh, starting the car and seeing how it sounds.